dear friends, dear brothers, sisters, comrades, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the love you have shown me and continue to show me from all around the world. Hundreds, perhaps thousands of people called, wrote, came out, protested, demonstrated. I did not know that many of you were there because I was not conscious for some of that time. I did not see you. I did not hear you, but I felt you in my heart. I felt you in my bones. I feel you now, and I thank you. I am not back to where I was before, but I will be, thanks to you, and thanks to the love you've radiated to me. I love you all. Not just this word. I love you all. From the bottom of my heart, I want to move. Long live John Africa, and we shall prevail. From Imprisoned Nation, this is your brother, Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Noel Hanrahan of Prison Radio. Your report, all right. Oh yeah, Black Sun in the hizzle, oh, for shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today, but first I want to say the views and opinions and that of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, its staff, affiliates, or associates. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of the arena. We are a council. With that being said, viewer discretion is advised. Today's topic. We're going to deal with Yemen, but first I want to introduce the guest to my right. We got brother. Welcome back, brother Kevin. Thank you very much, uh, Kevin Karen. I do some work with Georgia Peace and Justice Coalition and, and try to stay informed on some of this stuff. Oh, yes. Do yes. my best. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, you know. And to his uh, right, we got to get down. In the hizzle, folk shizzle, dizzle. You know, I'm talking about Kevin, peace and blessings, the research extraordinaire. Yes, sir. And the servant of Yah myself. Thank you for allowing me in the reading. The arena. The arena, right. Yes, sir. Let's get it right. Uncensored, by the way. That's right. Uncensored. The arena uncensored. Okay, Kevin, we got situation in Yemen. Can you explain what's going on over there? You know, I'm hearing the mm -hmm. news. I need to know the details here. Sure. Yes, what's going so, on? So, uh, for people who maybe haven't heard anything about Yemen, mm -hmm. um, maybe the first thing that comes to mind, or, or I would hope comes to mind, is, is uh, we've been doing drone strikes there. U.S. has been doing drone strikes oh. there for past, uh, I don't know, year or so, couple yes, years. Uh, they've escalated recently, and uh, now, lately, uh, they, really, they really haven't been any at all. And that's because uh, some stuff has been going on internally in Yemen, and the U.S. pulled out almost completely. Wow. So the U.S. pulled out, and what, what has happened is that there's a group in Yemen. Uh, they are known as the Houthi Rebels. Houthi, uh, that's okay. H-O-U-T-H-I, Houthi Rebels. Houthi, okay. uh, they are Shia Muslim. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's... Dang Muslims again. That's, uh, <laughs> well, a lot of people are Muslim in the region. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, and, and one of the things that kind of uh, characterizes the whole Middle East is this... Is, is some of, and it's not just this, but some of this conflict between Sunni and Shia Muslims. Right. So let's, let's go back to that and let's just review. Uh, you'll remember that Sunni are the majority. Sunni Muslims make up 90 to 96% of all Muslims in the world. Mm. Okay. Shia is a smaller group, maybe 6 10%, something like that. Okay. And then there's a couple other smaller groups as well. But these are the two major ones with Sunni being huge and Shia being smaller. Mm. So some, some places where Shia Muslims are the majority, uh, we know that in Iran, Iran, Shia Muslims make up the majority. Mm -hmm. Even though there's such a small percentage total, uh, Iran is run by uh, the, the Shia Muslim population, mm -hmm. uh, along with they have majorities in Iraq and uh, a couple other countries, Azerbaijan um, and... Uh, and uh, uh, a couple others. Right. <laughs> the now, Houthis are Shia. Okay. Now both factions are they shoot for what they call a theocracy, correct? Well, uh, you know that that's some things. I I do want to be clear that there's a diversity of opinion among all these groups. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, when you talk about a majority, yeah, there's this talk about 
in implementing Sharia law, okay. right? We've heard that before. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, they, they typically want some form of religious rule. That's a lot of times. Whenever these groups come to power, that's what happens, right? right? And that's why we hear about them. But that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, people who are Muslim always believe in that. In fact, there are large majorities of Muslims in the world that that don't necessarily want that. Um, okay, okay. So, I, you know, I just want to put that out there. But yes, the Houthis uh, are basically this group from northern Yemen, okay? If we think about where Yemen is. Yemen is um, basically, do we know the Arabian Peninsula? You have Saudi Arabia, this yes. huge country. It's the biggest one. Yemen is right on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And Oman is right next to it, okay? okay? And this is right next to Africa. Uh, you got Africa right here. Then you got Saudi Arabia right here. Uh, you know, Saudi Arabia yes. and Egypt are close together. And then uh, Yemen is right underneath. And so in northern Yemen, there's a big desert. This borders Saudi Arabia. This is where the Houthis, this is the Houthi stronghold. Okay. And uh, in 2014, September 2014, the Houthis came to the capital, Sana'a which is kind of in central Yemen, uh, on the west side, central Yemen. And uh, they basically came in, and they kind of took over things. And nobody was ready for this. I mean, the U.S. government really didn't see it coming. Uh, nobody really saw it coming. What we were doing there is we were bombing mm. al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. That's right. what the drone strikes are all about. That's we right. don't like al-Qaeda, and al-Qaeda and, al and the Arabian Peninsula are supposed to be the strongest ones, yes. and they, have a, they uh, control parts of Yemen, and uh, they're an important group in Yemen. Right. Um, and that's who we were trying to get rid of. This Houthi thing, we didn't foresee. The Obama administration, people in Yemen, they overlooked it. Um, now, they came to the capital, Sana'a, right? And they had a lot of power. And basically, they said, they, they started airing some grievances and started taking over parts of the city. And uh, there were going to be some negotiations about a new government, about a new constitution. Absolutely. Uh, the president, the current president of Yemen, or who was president at the time, his name is uh, Abdurrabu Mansur Hadi. So I'm going to call him Mansur Hadi. Okay. Um, and uh, so Mansur, President Mansur Hadi, who was in power at the time, uh, basically was trying to negotiate some things, gets basically overthrown. September, or, uh, September 2014, this all starts. And by January 2015, Mansur Hadi is basically, he gets rid of his entire cabinet. He's trying to gain control, and he can't. And so in February 2015, the Houthis take over the city by force hmm. and say, now we run stuff here. That's right. And Mansur Hadi leaves and he goes south to uh, Aden. The Gulf of Aden is the body of water between the Horn of Africa okay. and, uh, and South Yemen. And uh, Aden is a city on, on the, border, on the uh, coast there. Okay. And that's where he is now. And he said, okay, we're moving the capital to Aden now. Uh, meanwhile, hmm. you know, the Houthis have come in. They've put their own guy in power. Uh, their own person, uh, his name is basically Al Houthi. His, his, his last name is Al Houthi. Um, okay. And uh, he's the head of what is being called kind of the uh, Revolutionary Committee there. So, anyway, we're, we're kind of in this situation where Yemen is just being fought over. It, and and uh, since 1990, 1990 was when Yemen became a unified country. It used to be two different countries, right. North Yemen and South Yemen. South Yemen was a communist Marxist country. Oh. Um, and, and Northern Yemen was associated more with the West. The United States oh, okay. supports uh, stuff like that. And so in 1990, you know, they came in under one country, and now Yemen is, is, is breaking apart. And uh, uh, there's all kinds of these issues, and, and oh, so we'll see what a, happens. They had so, a Cold War, war yeah. split. Yeah. So, the most recent developments that we need to mention are okay, so in summary, the Houthis have taken over the capital of Sana'a, and Saudi Arabia, who is the most, arguably the most important player here, because Saudi Arabia wants to be the major power in the region, wants to make sure that Yemen does not pose any threat to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia has started bombing the country, and, uh, mm. and with U.S. support. I uh, mean, of course. Saudi Arabia has uh, actually the largest military equipment transaction in American history took place in 2010. Wow. Mm. Uh, President Obama, the Obama administration, sent $60 billion 
or the weapons. Largest in U.S. history mm. sale of weapons to Saudi Arabia in 2010. So the Houthis and, and a lot of people there who are getting killed by these bombs, they see that as, as the U.S. Mm. The U.S. is doing it and the U.S. is, is supporting it. And in my opinion, and, uh, in, and uh, I will defend this viewpoint throughout the broadcast okay. today, um, we should oppose these bombings. Saudi Arabia should not be bombing the area. Um, that's just not the way to do this. Uh, it's killing a lot of innocent people. Okay. Um, their argument for doing it is that they need to bring st stability in the region. Uh, you know, they need <laughs> to bring... Bomb them into stability. Yeah, yeah, bomb them into stability. They say, you know, uh, <laughs> we're trying to help, all these kind of things. So they're bombing Houthi strongholds, Houthi facilities in northern Yemen. And... Uh, and that's kind of been what they're doing, and they're arguing that it's a good thing to do. Meanwhile, we all got to remember, Saudi Arabia is a monarchy. It's ruled right. by kings, right. uh, right. the, the Saud family. Mm -hmm. so, um, so this is kind of where we're at right now. And uh, the U.S. has shown support. There have been ar arguments from lots of people that the Houthis are backed by Iran. Okay, no. Remember, Iran is majority Shia Muslims. Mm -hmm. The Houthis are Shia Muslims. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, there's been some, some support there. It's arguable how much support. Mm -hmm. There's no real official information. Uh, there was, you know, this shipment that was coming down to Yemen, possibly for the Houthis, from Iran. Mm -hmm. And the U.S. has shown its it's strong support for Saudi Arabia and Saudi's, Saudi Arabia's bombings by moving two of our ships into the region, basically mm. saying, you know, get out of here. We're doing, <laughs> we're doing exercises. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure exactly what else those mm. two ships are doing there, right. except for kind of being a symbol of you will not interfere here. This, right. is, uh, yeah. this is our ally, right. and we're basically letting them do what they want. Now, this is, this is kind of confusing right now. Uh, this this policy of the United States it doesn't make much sense. Okay, let's, let's, let's <laughs> so right now the United States is is supporting it's supporting Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. bombing pro Iranian forces mm -hmm. Houthi rebels. Right. right. However, in Iraq, the U S is currently supporting and arming pro Iranian forces. They're, we're allied with Iran there. So it's become this kind of regional politics thing where you know. We might not, uh, we, we have to show approval to what Saudi Arabia is doing because that's our strong ally. That's where we get a lot of our oil. That's where uh, it, it, we have a long-standing relationship with the kingdom there. Um, but, uh, and so we, we uh, are encouraging the bombing. In Iraq, we're actually working with Iran. And so, uh, yes. and, and Saudi Arabia obviously doesn't like that. Saudi Arabia has also been opposed to this nuclear agreement with Iran, uh, right. that they would not have a nuclear weapon and, and, you know, basically winding down that whole struggle. Um, and so there's a lot of regional politics at play. You know, who's going to be the strong force in the Middle East and uh, who are we going to back? And so that's kind of where we're at. And I'd be happy to go into some of this history that, that kind of built this conflict well but. please do and i want to just kind of reflect a little bit because when i think about iran mm. and the ouster of the shah it mm -hmm. seems like it's almost the reverse of what's happening here because the shah was backed by america the native iranian people wanted to take back control so they ousted the shah <laughs> and then they took back control under the kohomeini regime and so forth the, the leadership but now when we talk about over here in Yemen, what we see is America backing the, you're saying they're backing Saudi Arabia. Absolutely. Who's bombing mm -hmm. the, the Shia Muslims. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also convoluted, but yet you're saying in Iraq, mm -hmm. they're supporting Iran against it. Now, that, the, the other thing I wanted to mention, because it, it, I heard in the news that during this Bronx, they're drones. supporting Iran against ISIS, I believe. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That so, was the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it, it gets real confusing. <laughs> but there were supposedly some Americans killed mm -hmm. by drone strikes. That's was true. that in Yemen or was that in another part? Of, did you did you guys yeah, that hear about that? Part. That was in Iraq, I think, if I'm not mistaken. That was in Yemen. The, uh, Yemen? So the, there was a drone strike that The Guardian has just revealed in January. 
uh, this drone strike, and this was back in back in January, right. okay? Um, and, and we're not doing drone strikes. I think there was one maybe, but uh, they're, they're, drone strikes have dropped in Yemen because mm -hmm. we pulled all our people out. Mm -hmm. We pulled all our people out because the Houthi rebels, we did not see this coming. Houthi rebels came in and took control of everything. Mm -hmm. um, now, this, um, I'm not sure. I actually might be able to look this up real mm -hmm. quick. But um, an Italian citizen mm -hmm. and an American citizen right. were killed exactly. in a drone strike that yes. was attacking... Al Qaeda mm -hmm. and an Al Qaeda compound, and they were being held there, and it killed them. Right. Um, Wait, I think this might have been Yemen too. It's okay, exactly. it, I can I can look it up it real so familiar quick because okay, okay. what we're seeing, America is in so much, and they play both ends against the middle because that's what they do as far as in uh, selling military equipment. And he just mentioned about them selling the largest amount of military equipment to Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then, of course, backing Iran, who is supposed to be an American enemy, uh, against Iraq uh, well, or the vestiges of the Muslims there. Well, to answer the question, I think what America is doing is they're weighing each situation separately. Like I said, like, I mean, ISIS is a threat, so they, will go, they welcome the help of Iran and uh Trying so to trying to you know keep them back, right, right, yeah. right. But at the same time, you have a whole different situation with the Houthis now. Um, I'm trying to. Yeah, cause this is very confusing. It's very yeah, confusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very yeah. confusing. So I'm trying to, I guess, concentrate. Let me let's concentrate on the Houthis first. Let's, okay. Um, the drone strike was in <clears throat> Yemen, so you were okay. right about oh, that. Wow. Yeah, 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 I wanted to make joking. sure. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. The Houthis, they, um, I guess I want to learn about them. I mean, I want to, I mean, they want to, okay, they are. Other than the fact that they're mm -hmm. Sunni Muslims mm -hmm. and they, uh, they're fundamentalists? Or okay, they... so they're the same type of Muslims that Saudi Arabia are. Uh, they're, they're Shia Muslims. Yeah, okay, the Houthis Shia. are Shia Muslims. Okay. They're the same type of Muslims as uh, in Iran. Iran. In Iran. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Iran so you Saudi see here, they, yeah. you see here that Saudi Arabia is going, oh, we don't want them to be in power mm -hmm. because they'll be against us and they'll be with Iran. You see what I'm saying? So yes, are they yes. under the leadership of the of the uh, I say Khomeini's, but and we know it's not Khomeini's, but the uh, kind of uh, uh, leadership like the priest, God priest that rules in Iran. Sure. Um, so the question was: mm -hmm. Are the Houthis under the release, the leadership mm -hmm. of Iranian Iranian officials? Right. Exactly. Uh, because they share the the Shia heritage. Exactly. Um, and the answer to that is is actually kind of unknown. We don't know to what extent mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. actually backing them. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll name like Iona Craig, who's mm -hmm. been a longtime re reporter in Yemen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jeremy Scahill, who wrote uh, right. Dirty Wars, Dirty also yes. spent a lot of time in Yemen. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's another gentleman, uh, Brian Whitaker. They all have been interviewed on this topic. What, mm -hmm. To what extent is Iran really backing the Houthi rebels? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's unclear. Um, obviously, in the U.S., uh, the U.S. mainstream media has tried to play this up and say, Iran is, you know, messing around in Yemen, and that's why we got to support this bombing campaign. Yeah, um, and, uh, you know, the same thing has happened in Saudi Arabia. But mm -hmm. the honest truth, you know, the, the hard truth is there's not a lot to necessarily support that, right. although we do know that uh, they support one another, that right. there is... But but in terms of like military support, you right. know, are they getting instructions? I don't I don't think so. Right. Uh, at least there's not a lot of evidence there to support mm -hmm. that. So not support, but just uh, just the uh, as far as the resources and supplies. Sure. And that, I know because earlier we talked, and I was trying to break that down to Gideon. <laughs> That's how America was doing in the First World War with England, but that's a whole other topic. I'm gonna, we gonna, we're going to reserve that battle. We're going to reserve that battle. <laughs> so. Not necessarily controlling the Houthis, but just giving them the supplies mm -hmm. so you know what fight your, fight your cause. <laughs> so now he was going to give us some uh, historical background okay. on the Houthis and, sure. and yeah. what's going on. Sure. There. Yeah, I want to know who they are. Okay, so, so one thing that we got to understand is that uh, Saudi Arabia, the history of Saudi Arabia and the history of Yemen have been very tied together, mm -hmm. politically, militarily, everything. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, uh, you know, the reason for that is that Saudi Arabia has been a strong... Uh, one of the reasons that it's been a strong empire almost in the region is because of the oil, exactly. right? The oil that they possess and exactly. control and are able to sell abroad and mm -hmm. get lots of money and military for. Right. Uh, now, 
uh, Saudi Arabia, as it is today, started in 1932. Yes. Before that, it had a couple other different governments that were similar, but um, the Saudi Arabia that we know today began in 1932, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, in 1934, that was the first treaty that established a border mm -hmm. with Yemen. Mm -hmm. um, there was a huge boom in the production of oil in the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That enriched Saudi Arabia even more so. Right. Mm -hmm. They needed people to work on those oil rigs. They needed people um, to basically do the work that people were not willing to do in Saudi Arabia. Exactly. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, that, that sounds familiar maybe to some of the relationships that the U.S. has with That's some right. of its uh, border states like Mexico. Mexico. Um, and Saudi Arabia ha or uh, Yemen has always been a very poor country. Mm -hmm. Always, also, it's uh, had some regional unity, and in that way, it's been a populous kind of governments have, have popped up there. Lots of tribal communities that support one another, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Right. And the border has never been very well defined. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because there's a huge desert there. Mm -hmm. And whenever there's a huge desert, I mean, it doesn't really matter where the border is. <laughs> you know, the people who live there cross back and forth. We don't care about this mm -hmm. until, of course, the 1990s, 1989, when... Uh, when uh, Yemen discovered that there was some oil, oil there. Oh, well, <laughs> there, there. there you go. And then, then the border becomes important. <laughs> exactly. So for a long time, you had people in tribes that lived in North Yemen, and they'd travel back and forth between Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia didn't care because they needed the cheap labor. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many Yemenis that feel we built Saudi Arabia. And you, you've yes. left us out of control of that. That sounds familiar. Man, that sounds, that like sounds like something. Somebody here in America. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> exactly. Um, now, they weren't enslaved, but um, yeah. okay. they, were working, they were working for cheap. Yeah. And uh, they were traveling back and forth. And um, Yemen's always had a large population, large mm -hmm. birth rate. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. were able to supply that cheap labor to Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Now, in that way, North Yemen where, you know, they had farms and stuff like that. Right. Over time, they were, you know, Yemenis are traveling north. Well, they're not working on the farms anymore. I can make more money, go north, work on the oil rig or whatever. Exactly. And so that ruins kind of some of the infrastructure right. in northern Yemen. It makes Yemen very dependent on Saudi mm -hmm. Arabia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, so we have this kind of relationship where Saudi Arabia, you know, is powerful because of the oil they have. Right. Yemen's weaker and they have people who are traveling back and forth, right? Yeah, exactly. Then uh, you have something else interesting that happens, and that is the Gulf War. Remember 1990, yeah, 91? Absolutely. Right. absolutely. Yeah, Saddam Hussein in Iraq mm -hmm. goes in and invades Kuwait. Yes. Tries to take Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Now, Saddam Hussein has also had... There's, there's a, All <laughs> rich Kuwait, by the way. Yeah, oil rich <laughs> Kuwait. So, uh, Saudi Arabia, or I'm sorry, Iraq... And Saddam Hussein specifically has always had kind of a relationship with the Yemeni government, mm -hmm. specifically one man who I haven't mentioned, and that is Ali Abdullah Saleh. Okay? Mm -hmm. Ali Abdullah Saleh is going to be a very important character that we need to talk about. Mm -hmm. He's the former president of Yemen. Okay? Mm -hmm. the Mansur Hadi, who I mentioned earlier, he's mm -hmm. the current president. Right. He's the guy that Saleh set up to take uh, power. Puppet. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he was oh. his second in command and that's how he became in power. The reason Saleh had to go was because of the Arab Spring in 2011. Yes. There's lots of uh, revolution mm -hmm. and, and, and revolt and Saleh stepped down and said, here, number two can step up. That's right. fine. Mm -hmm. But Ali Abdullah Saleh is still playing a big role. Right. He's right. always had a relationship with Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. always had kind of a military relationship with Iraq. Mm -hmm. And Saleh he was actually the ruler for over 30 years of Yemen. Before Yemen was Yemen, yeah. when it was North Yemen in two separate places, you know, he was in control. He was a big factor the whole time, since mm -hmm. 1973. Okay. Okay? Right. And, he, and when, when it unified in 1990, North Yemen and South Yemen became Yemen as Why? we know it today. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the president until 2011. So from 1990 to 2011. So you can see this guy's very important. Oh, yeah. Um, now, is it a monarchy? Uh, no, no, no. It's it's democratically elected. Well, it's kind of it's kind of been a number of different things, right? <laughs> <laughs> what did it morph into, though? <laughs> um, I mean, whenever you have the same leader for you know thirty five, forty that's years, a monarchy. you can kind of feel a certain way about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I have a hard time picking any one thing to call it because. Right. 
It yeah. is what it is. It is what it is. Um, <laughs> um, so well, you got to define what it is. That's what I'm trying to yeah. figure it out. But yeah, I think it's sounds well, like a dictatorship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. let me try to get back to the Houthis. Mm-hmm. Okay? okay. All right. So during this whole time, mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia has developed a relationship with Yemen um, because you have all these people traveling back and forth and working. Right. Yemen's very dependent on Saudi Arabia for that work exactly. because otherwise it can't feed its population. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. Um, and uh, Saudi Arabia doesn't like the fact <coughs> that obviously there is this large population in Yemen. Mm-hmm. They were not called the Houthis at the time, but that's essentially what they were. They were called the Zaidi, but they were Shia Muslims. Mm-hmm. Okay. Saudi Arabia doesn't like that. So they right. say, let's, let's send some people down there to convert them. Mm. Right? Let's send some missionaries. Uh oh. So they started doing that uh, in the 90s. And they started converting people from Shia to Sunni. Okay. Now, if, uh, you know, if somebody comes into your home, maybe you're Catholic, right? Right. Somebody comes into your neighborhood, you got a really strong Catholic community, and right. they say, you know, you should convert to Judaism right. or something like that. Right. This is going to stir up a little bit. It, it's going to make some people upset, yes. especially people who are going to lose power exactly. when, when, because That's religion right. is a form of, of power, power right. in the region. Absolutely. So that made some Houthis really mad because also they started, you know, implementing certain policies. They'll say, no, no, we want to promote Sunni people, not right. Shia. Right. So the, the Zaidi people, the Houthi people, same thing at this point. Um, it's a different name for the same kind of origin. Uh, right? Mm-hmm. Um, they get upset about that, and they start to form their own kind of unity mm-hmm. and respond and right. basically organize. Mm-hmm. And, and they literally, you know, had their own army. The resistance. Okay? Yeah, they, they're <laughs> building up resistance to, to power. And Yemen has never been completely stable. Remember, it was two states. You had a Marxist, really Marxist, left-wing yeah. government right. uh, on, uh, in South Yemen, which mm-hmm. actually really, if you look at the, 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 um, the country of Yemen, it's like this. South Yemen was really like this. Mm-hmm. It was the bottom portion here. And North Yemen, which was Western oriented, was here. Okay. okay. So um, the Houthis, uh, you know, are angry right. because they don't like this. Basically, converting people to Sunni. Sure. They want people to stay Shia. They want people to stay and support their religion. And over time, they basically organized and developed this kind of resistance. And then this all culminated in 2000. Well. Some of it played out in 2011 mm-hmm. with the Arab Spring That's right. and the overthrow of Ali Abdullah Saleh, mm-hmm. who's the former president. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a lot of names here. Yes. I'm sorry. No, well, you got them. Um, it's trying to follow you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then they, they started coming in, and they basically wanted their own agenda pushed. Mm-hmm. And so they finally came in. Mm-hmm and took the capital, Sana'a, in mm-hmm. 2014, and that's where we're at today. The Houthis, uh, and to be, to be honest, again, mm-hmm. the U.S. government, who was involved at the time, they did not predict the strength of the Houthis. They, they were not ready for this. So this is another force. So now the capital is being fought over, mm-hmm. and the Houthis have the most control. This Shia population has the most control. But you have Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, who's there, mm-hmm. and they do not like each other, so they're fighting over it. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. ISIS has actually gone in and claimed responsibility for some attacks. Yes. yes. Um, and then, of course, you have you know different people loyal to the different presidents from before that are all there's a struggle for power. Right. Wow. And it's unclear what's going to happen, but it's very clear that. Saudi Arabia bombing the entire region is, is making it worse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I think, you know, if we're going to look at this from a perspective, well, what should we do? What should we support? What should we think? Uh, you know, what should we be thinking about? I think it's we should, we should say, why is Saudi Arabia allowed to just bomb this region? Just because there are some forces that they don't necessarily like that are taking power in a country mm-hmm. that is a sovereign entity. Well, it's not, it sounds yeah. like, yeah, it, it all escalated from the time when they were trying to, um, on a small level, convert <clears throat> the different, you know, the Sunni the sure. faction mm-hmm. of Islam. And so it escalated, mm-hmm. you know, because as Saudi Arabia got the bombs at the end of the day. But mm-hmm. my thing is, um, okay, say for instance, Saudi Arabia converts every Muslim over to uh, Sunni, 
Mm-hmm. You know what? I mean, what what is the? I mean, is there any resources in Yemen that can be claimed? Like you said, you mentioned well, sure. Oil. Yes, he there's. Did. Uh, so Yemen's exports over ninety percent of the exports are oil and natural gas. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, there's some. It's still you know economically it's very weak. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so how do you control? So the, let me let me put this together. They have a resource mm-hmm. in order to control the people, change their religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. And the idea behind that is to make sure, (laughs) in order to in order to control the people, yeah, uh, change their religion. religion. The idea, some of the idea behind that is, they didn't want anybody going against the Saudi Arabian monarchy, Mm -hmm. right? Right. The king, the the king in Saudi Arabia, they don't want people to be able to organize against the king of Saudi Arabia. And so Yemen, more than anything, you know, more than being an economic resource, more than having oil, yes, those are important factors, and yes, they matter. Mm -hmm. But more than that, it's the fact that if we have a government here that doesn't support Saudi Arabia, it's a place, and with very porous borders, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a place for people to go and organize against Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And Saudi Arabia wants to make sure they got entrenched power in the form of the monarchy, mm-hmm. and they want to make sure that none of that is going to be tolerated. Yeah. Yes, okay. Yes. So Yemen poses a threat to that. Huh? So Yemen poses a threat, uh-huh. and and you know to bring it back to if you remember the Gulf War, right? Yes. yes. That's where a lot of these tensions started to really build up. That's yes. when, because what happened was, Yemen had Ali Abdullah Saleh, who was the president of Yemen at the time, had this relationship with Iraq mm-hmm. and Saddam Hussein, and Saddam Hussein went and invaded Kuwait. Yes. Saudi Arabia is very upset. Remember, mm-hmm. Saudi yeah. Arabia and mm-hmm. and and you know the U.S. is going to intervene on behalf. Yemen did its best to try to stay neutral. Why? Because on one hand, their population is dependent on traveling back and forth to Economically. work. Economically, that's right. So they're yeah. dependent on Saudi Arabia. On the other side, they got this relationship with Iraq. And they've been doing trade with Iraq. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of the other way that they get any resources. Right. And this posed a challenge for them. Because yeah. Iraq invaded Kuwait, they're saying, okay, we condemn the invasion, but we also don't think that Western powers should intervene. And uh, what they did, there was a no vote at the UN in uh, 1990. And uh, the no vote was basically, um, you know, should there, should there be military intervention to retake control of Kuwait, mm-hmm. to retake it, to get it back from Iraq, mm-hmm. okay? And Yemen voted no. And the U.S., there was a U.S. diplomat at the time, commented and said that will be the most expensive no vote in history. Mm-hmm. And it was, mm-hmm. because Yemen got screwed two different ways. Mm-hmm. Saudi Arabia cut off ties. They, had, they, they expelled any Yemenis. 750,000 right, right. Yemenis are sent back to Yemen mm-hmm. without jobs. They don't have their jobs anymore. Mm. Remember, there's no development in the north anymore because right. everybody was dependent on these jobs. That's right. So they get all these people who are basically refugees in their own country. Mm. Uh, mm. And then, you know, because the U.S. went in and, and uh, went into the Gulf War right. and uh, Kuwait was retaken control of, sanctions were put on Iraq. Iraq can't trade anymore. So trade between Yemen and Iraq was cut off. And Yemen mm-hmm. just starves at that point. The, so the country just falls even more into poverty. And then you have religious groups and stuff like that that are battling over control. So why should we in the West, and obviously we don't control anything like the Yemenis, but what is the, in your perspective, uh, looks like the overall uh, effect of the Yemenis being uh, ostracized and put in a position of impotence, uh, whether it's from uh, the uh, Saudi Arabia or just because they haven't been able to develop the infrastructure in, within their own country to employ its people. How do you see that other than seeing a society waste away? What do you think the overall global impact of that is? The global impact of, of basically Yemen not having any, any development. Right. Um, you know, I think it's kind of indicative. I mean, this is, this is you know, something that plays out in this region, but also in other regions of the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, the powerful want to stay powerful. Saudi Arabia wants to stay powerful. So mm-hmm. they'll promote uh, underdevelopment of Yemen. Right. And uh, during the time, actually, oh, we're... Wow. Give us some keys how they do that. Well... I mean, other than... Bombing. Destabilizing sure, the sure. region. <laughs> uh, 
So there, there's actually another U.S. diplomat quoted this phrase. It's called, you want to keep, uh, Saudi Arabia has always attempted to keep Yemen on the wobble, as they say. And what yeah. they mean by that is, you know, when you had North Yemen and South Yemen, two different governments, Saudi Arabia, so, so remember, South Yemen was um, this Marxist communist state. Right. right. Um, it was very left wing. Uh, you know, they tried to do some, some good populist things. Mm -hmm. right. And they were supported uh, by, well, guess who? Who, uh, you know, who's the other common, communist quote unquote powers in the world at the time? We're thinking pre 1990. Uh, yeah, Russia. Uh, Russia. Uh, yeah. Soviet Union. Uh, what's That's his right. Name? Mikhail, uh, not <laughs> yeah. Marishnikov, that was Gorbachev. a dancer. Gorbachev. 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 Thank Gorbachev. You. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the Soviet <laughs> Union was supporting this, uh, this Marxist government right. in South mm -hmm. Yemen. Uh, you know, the Republic of China was also, uh, Ru the People's Republic of China was mm -hmm. also supporting it right. in some ways. And so. Uh, because of that, Saudi Arabia said, okay, well, we got to support the North because we want to make sure they're balanced. Right. We want to make sure they keep fighting with each other so and don't have any resistance to us. Right. <laughs> so this is kind of a continuation in a sense because you got Iran mm -hmm. and then you got, uh, which is which is remnants in support of the old Soviet, you know. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then you got Saudi Arabia, which is supported by the West. So you, right. know, you got, like, I guess a setup for, like, proxy war. Right. Well, let me ask you this. What about and, and people? There are people who say mm -hmm. that there's that this is really a proxy war between Iran and South uh, mm -hmm. or and Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. in Yemen. Now, I think that that's an exaggeration mm -hmm. of the support that that the Houthis have received from Iran. Mm -hmm. But uh, but there are people who say that. Well, militarily, when we look at the geography of the area. Does Yemen represent some type of strategic location that would be beneficial as far as a uh, maybe spearheading a, a well, intervention a into that Saudi region? Arabia. Yeah, they don't. Well, I mean, Saudi Arabia is already with Global Cop America, sure. so that's what he's indicated. Right. But when we talk about Yemen, does it represent a, a strategic military point that whereby that could be used by the West? in order to get closer to Iran, because on one hand you're saying they're supporting Iran in Iraq, but we know in America what we've heard about Iran is trying to prevent them from having any kind of nuclear capability. Mm -hmm. So do you see Yemen a a militarily as a strategic location that might assist global America cop in its uh, global world domination? Um, I think that, well, I think that Yemen you know, it's part of the Arabian Peninsula. Peninsula. The Arabian mm -hmm. Peninsula includes Saudi Arabia, Yemen, Oman, you know, this whole kind of triangular yes. area there. And, uh, you know, that whole area is important because we know there's oil there right. Right. and because we know there's oil close to there. Right. So, you know, whenever you have a situation like that, yeah, Yemen represents this territory of pretty vast territory with coastal, you know, coastal regions, mm -hmm. right, on, on the... Uh, uh, on, what's called the Gulf of Aden there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, the Soviets supported, one reason that they supported was because they got to use Gulf facilities exactly. uh, for their Navy and right, stuff. Right. So, yeah, there is some, uh, you know, geopolitical strategic importance. Mm -hmm. And there's also just this fact that if Yemen was opposed to Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia would have to deal with the threat of Yemen on the south and the fact that you have Iran over here right. on the kind of north, what is that, the north uh, eastern side. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it, you know, it makes it a two front kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think that uh, Yemen does represent that, not necessarily because of the vast resources <laughs> that they have. Mm -hmm. I mean, they mm -hmm. do have some oil, like we talked about, mm -hmm. and some natural gas, not near as much as Saudi Arabia right. or Iran. Mm -hmm. But the fact that they're located right there. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, they're right there. And that's, they've also been the hub of the U.S. drone war because mm. Al-Qaeda yeah. is able to organize in that region. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people fighting over this area. Um, and some of it's just because of the location where it is. And, and some of it's because of, uh, you know, for other reasons. Right, so resource base and then it being so close to Saudi Arabia, I can see the, the importance, mm -hmm. the, the, the urgency. Mm -hmm. of, you know, making sure we bomb those Houthis 
and make sure they don't organize because, like I said, get too close to the king, mm -hmm. and also because you know, well, yeah, mainly because they're too close to the king, you know, with the of of things. Iran, um, oh, no, being... Saudi Arabia. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah the king yeah. of Saudi Arabia, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, let me say. Seven seven zero five five nine two nine nine nine. Wait, no, I'm sorry. Seven seven zero five five nine two nine nine nine. Y'all call in. Now let me ask you this: in reference to the Houthis, uh, Houthi, is that a tribal term or is that a colloquial term that uh, encompasses various tribes? Because uh, when you know, I may be a Hebrew, but I practice Judaism. So at the end of the day, are we talking about an amalgamation of different tribal factions coming that are Shia, that are come falling under the Shia uh, religious philosophy that are called Husi or is Husi themselves a specific tribal faction? I, uh, no, I think, um, I think your first kind of inclination was correct. This is, you know, I think, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I think that the Houthis represent basically the Shia population there, mm -hmm. and that there's a number of tribes and things that support them. Mm -hmm. That's that's my impression. Mm -hmm. That's my mm -hmm. impression. And what the, the the thing that's bringing them together is trying to organize so that they can begin to not only have a political power but some control within their own region, mm -hmm. and then uh, be able to organize against the the powers that already exist, like Saudi Arabia. So that they can have some autonomy is that in fact uh yeah yeah um i think that i think that autonomy is part of it yeah. um i think that the fact that uh you had uh sunni populations that you know saudi arabia influencing the development of sunni populations mm -hmm. uh, and conversion of people to the sunni religion mm -hmm. and then making things difficult for yes. shia people mm -hmm. so they said no we're gonna push back against that you know we can and then we're gonna do it to you mm -hmm. uh, so yes. you know they're they're also, I mean, they're, they're a violent force, um, yes. and, and I think we should recognize. I mean, if you turn on uh, anything, one of the reasons it's easy to demonize them is because, you know, one of their chants is death to Israel, death to America. Right, right, right? right. right. Yeah. Death to Israel, death to America. That's what the Houthis are saying. Well, why are they saying that? They're saying that because the bombs that are raining down on them of course. were bought from us. Yes. We sold Saudi Arabia those bombs. Mm -hmm. uh, the drone strikes that have been raining down on different parts of, of Yemen, yes. which were supposed to attack Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, right. right? Which the Houthis don't like. Right. They're supposed to attack Al-Qaeda, but who knows who we're killing? I mean, this drone strike in January that killed the Italian citizen and right. the U.S. citizen, Exactly. I mean, the only reason we have any idea about it is because an American died. Right. I mean, so, so we it. don't get to hear about any of the other ones. Exactly. So the Houthi and the Al Qaeda, what is their beef with each other? Well, um, I think I, <laughs> that that's it's a good question, yeah, I'm and uh, I'm actually uncertain exactly why they don't uh, why they're not allied. Right. Um, or even ISIS, for that matter. Right. Right. Uh, I they're actually in competition. Um, right. mm -hmm. They're in competition mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. one another for control over this region, and right. uh, Al Qaeda, Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, right? That's part of Saudi Arabia, Yemen, all over. Right. Um, has been a strong force there, and I think they want control of the region, mm -hmm. and they don't want the Houthis to have it. Um, well, you know, we've seen to... historically. Uh, we've just seen. Uh, I, what about CIA involvement? Now, of course, we're asking you high-level questions, and this is probably <laughs> way above <laughs> what your information is allowing. But we've what? seen uh, in regional conflicts the CIA and other organizations involved because they don't want anybody to have real power. Because if they begin, like you say, if ISIS unifies wait, 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 with Al-Qaeda and the Houthis, and they are all you involved. Know, are you making accusations that maybe the Houthis or Al-Qaeda is CIA? What I'm saying, CIA through Saudi Arabia could, and he's talked about the uh, the people who are coming in to convert them. Right. What there are, a lot of missionaries, right. a lot of times have CIA leanings and connections because they're- Oh, like Jesuits. Like Jesuits. Through Je religion, huh? 
Well, I mean, right, we can go the there. Bible, Quran, and using <laughs> but religion, I'm simply saying right. destabilization is a good way Knows how to Gideon keep. Ignores that. No, okay. I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually acknowledging that, but I'm saying <clears throat> there seems to be a reason for destabilization of the area because if they began <clears throat> to unify and organize, then of course Saudi Arabia loses control, which they're backed by America, and then Iran. So I think it's to their advantage to a certain extent to keep these people destabilized and to keep that region no, but fighting. You're putting, no, 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 Gideon. You're putting the blame on Saudi Arabia why the Houthis and Al-Qaeda can't get together. Saudi Arabia don't like neither one of them. So what I'm trying to say is sometimes we got to look at the individuals who are not getting along themselves. Stop. Like, if me and you not getting along, we're going to blame, oh, blame the white man. Blame you. No, sometimes you got to look at the fact that, like me, I don't like your religion. Right. That has nothing to do with Kevin. Right. So we got to take responsibility. So maybe there's something in the religion of the Houthis and some philosophy in Al-Qaeda that they're, they're not coming together with. You know what I'm saying? We can't always blame it on the CIA or the evil white man. Right? You know, some well, I mean, he was talking about they sent the missionaries in to convert. And right. I believe the reason that, the only reason they, the, here you're but, talking but, about but people who were, were, were formed as a kickback. Now, mind you, Al-Qaeda was already formed at this point. Sure, sure. So why are they not getting along is what I'm saying. These are two, you talking about two different, you, you're talking about the, okay, Saudi Arabia is with their, uh, missionaries. I understand that. What I'm saying is that the Houthis are against those missionaries. They see their game. They're right. Like, we're against the monarchy and so forth. Apparently, but is that the Houthi elite or is that the regular <clears throat> people? Because the people who are working that are migrating across from Saudi Arabia, they're looking for employment. And mm -hmm. most of the time, the poor, that's all they want to do is just survive. So what they're doing is sending the I missionaries in to convert well, I mean, you still have some that are poorer than others. You have some who are uh, confederate with the leadership because they give them the crumbs that fall off their table. They're maybe the supervisors over the people that are coming in in the migratory. Somebody has to teach them their job. So I'm simply saying the missionaries coming in to convert the Houthis and the people who are traditionalists see that and they, they're saying, wait a minute, you're turning our people... These are ancient culture here, and now you convert it like you said originally. So, but the question is, what's the real purpose behind the missionaries? Like we you to mentioned convert. about convert, but who do they really work for? They work is for it just king. religion, or is it more political and no, economic? It's obvious it's for the Saudi king to keep down. Once you control their religion, you can control their thought factor. That's why you know, the evil white man gave you the Bible so he can control you, and that's why you're docile, and you refuse to fight, and you wait on some Yahshua. You see how that works? They're trying to do the same thing over there in Yemen. Give them their religion. Doctor, because nowhere in Islam, I've been told by Muslims that they endorse uh, monarchy. That's, they're against that in Islam. But somehow they done watered it down. Now they got their missionaries, and we're going to convert and convince the people that Monarchies are okay. It's okay to have a monarchy, which a lot Islam teaches against that. Well, what would you say? Well, I would say what's very clear when it comes to the CIA, what is clear is we, the United States, mm -hmm. is giving information to Saudi Arabia about where to bomb. Okay? Right. That's the Somebody's CIA. Somebody's giving them information. That's the CIA. That's right. So yes. The role of the CIA, I don't know whether the CIA played a role in the missionaries. I think mm -hmm. that Saudi Arabia was mainly the, motiv the motivator behind trying to convert people and things like that. Right. But the, uh, the strikes that the bombings, this, the huge bombing campaign, and it really right. is, it, it's right. a big bombing campaign that uh, Saudi Arabia is currently engaged in, they're getting targets through U.S. intelligence. Exactly. The other side is the drone strikes that were taking place before that. We're all, you know, CIA is the one that's operating a lot of these drone strikes, Absolutely. operating the intelligence for the drone strikes, and, uh, and quite honestly doesn't know who they're targeting. I mean, they don't know who they're targeting obviously when they, they fire don't, the missile. They, yeah, oh, I mean, but obviously they have to have coordinates, and only, uh, I mean, you've got I mean, satellites. Satellites can only give you so much oh, information. Oh, Google. They have to have on the ground... In no, they don't. Intel, I believe. No, they don't. Okay. See, this is why y'all Hebrews need to catch up with technology. They have a thing called Google Earth. 
that? Sure, I understand. Okay, Google. Yes. Uh, yes. Google Earth. They don't need people on the ground no more. They can just get coordinates from space. But that's why they killed the Frenchman and the American because they got Italian. misinformation. The Italian. Italian. <laughs> Thank you. So <laughs> at the end of the day, they, they hit target. They hit some targets apparently. Right. They didn't just throw bombs in the middle of nowhere. They apparently hit, hit some targets. Now it might be the wrong targets. You know. Well, therein lies my point. Apologize. Well, no, no, no. Actually, you know what? The terrorists had them captive. And mm-hmm. so I think what you're saying is that, and what Obama apologized for is that they will end up being uh, collateral damage. Well, they that's exactly the what they classified as. Now, but, would but you say the targets, that there are military intelligence and individuals <clears throat> like Snowden or other people who would be on the ground in that region and getting paid to give information, intel about where they say Al Qaeda? or ISIS operations are where they can have a, a more uh, direct information on where they should bomb. Did you just say Edward Snowden? I would say. <laughs> go ahead, go yeah. ahead. Go I said ahead. Snowden because he had obtained information from this country. It took it. A, I mean, so we're talking about people being on yeah, the but ground. Yeah, we're talking about hackers. I mean, well, it's I mean, hackers, yeah, yeah. but we're just t- talking about information, basically. Okay. That's what I'm saying. One is on a computer. The other is one person telling another. Uh, undercover agent, whatever you want to call it. Well, we, we know from some released information that one of the things that the CIA does is they track cell phones. Mm-hmm. And exactly. one of the things that Al-Qaeda does is they put all their cell phones in a bag, mix them up, and, and pull them back out later. So we, we know that they do that. Mm-hmm. But the CIA, uh, and the reason they do that is so that they mix up whose cell phone is whose. Right. Um, but the CIA continues to you know basically target cell phones. And uh. if they see your cell phone... That's who they're going to kill. Maybe they, and, and a lot of times, they don't know who the cell phone belongs to, even to begin with. Right. What they right. know is that this is a cell phone that is called this number, this number, this number, this number. And we think, based on the call pattern, that right. they're operating with Al-Qaeda. That's the argument that they make. They don't know the name of the person. They don't know right. anything about them, necessarily, right. besides who they're calling. Um, now, there's also cases where... You know, the U.S. goes in and has agents in different places. Absolutely. Um, and, and these agents will try to uh, obtain in- intelligence in different ways. Right. And so somebody might say, hey, that's an Al-Qaeda cell over there, and you guys should take it out. And then the U.S. will send, you know, some – either they'll send a drone or sometimes they actually send troops in that go in and, and do like a quick uh, – you know, run through, they pull everybody out, maybe take all the men and kill them. That's right. Right. Um, and, and that happens as well. And it might be that this informant just didn't like the guy. Exactly. Just didn't, just didn't like this family or whatever. Exactly. That happens all the time. Um, and, mm. and I would say that Jeremy Scahill has done some really great reporting on that if people are looking for more information. Mm-hmm. Jeremy Scahill at The Intercept Dirty Wars, also right. wrote Dirty Wars. So exactly. Those are, those are uh, two things that we know happen. Right. Um, it's... It's very difficult in these situations like in Yemen right now where even the U.S. government and the U.S. agents have pulled out because who these have taken over the capital. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very difficult to know exactly who's there on the ground and mm-hmm. what they're doing. Mm-hmm. And honestly, a lot of this um, you know, will come out again in a couple months. There will mm-hmm. be investigations and things like that, actual reporters looking at it. So mm-hmm. it's hard to know exactly. on the ground what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but we can describe it from there. Well, as we see this scenario unfold, and we've talked about the various components of this uh, intrusion and how the Houthis now have taken over, uh, do you see there any parallels to what we see happening in America right now? We know there, there there's riots in Boston. I mean, there's a lot of discontent about killings. I mean, when we talk about political unrest, uh, what can we learn from this takeover in uh, Yemen and the Houthis and their ability to actually affect some type of uh, international press uh, information about their, their plight? Well, I think, you know, one thing that kind of struck me what you asked was, you know, what's going on globally and how can we take lessons from this in America? And this is just my opinion, I think that global inequality 
has been on the rise for a very long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of stuff that has come out recently, mm -hmm. uh, reports from international human rights groups, mm -hmm. this book, Capital in the 21st Century mm -hmm. by Thomas Piketty, mm -hmm. um, all detailing the rise in inequality across the globe. Right. Yemen has always been kind of a place where this is a problem, mm -hmm. where inequality has been a problem. Saudi Arabia, obviously huge levels of inequality with, oh, a, with a monarchy. Yes. yes. But I think in the U.S., and this is just my opinion, certainly. but that some of the, uh, you know, it's always been like this to some extent. Mm -hmm. You know, there's mm -hmm. always been black people getting killed by police. Right. There's yeah. always, you know, there's always been that to a degree. But policing has increased, militarized policing and things like that. Exactly. Um, and I think that might be in response to levels of inequality. Yes. People right. wanting to protect what's theirs mm -hmm. from massive amounts of poor people or people who are just average people mm -hmm. who are just trying to live. Mm -hmm. So I think that some of this unrest is, is a result of that, I would say. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I mean, I, I agree. And, uh, um, you know, Especially, you know, with, with the Arab uprising that caused a lot of, you know, uh, a, a big shift, mm -hmm. you know, okay. And, 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 you know, and I, I remember, you know, we've had uh, Maryam and Yanga mentioned before in Islam, you know, that uh, they don't know how Saudi Arabia gets away with having a monarchy when actually the whole teachings teach against that, you know, it's more of a theocracy, you know. But. Well, they get away with it because of oil. See, there's a global change shift taking place. Environmentally, I believe that we are beginning to see that the earth is under a tremendous strain. And we're talking about global warming. I believe more and more people are feeling and seeing the effects of it. Yeah. And you know, that was just a, a news release as I heard today that they have the ability to create an automobile that runs off air. What? Air. Really? <laughs> They've also, Where can I get one? <laughs> I, I, the, well, see, when, when you take away the oil factor out of the world geopolitical arena, you eliminate 90% of the wars that are taking place because it's all backed by the people who are oil barons, people who have want control over reason because of oil. If we begin to develop resources that are from water, sun, air, then you begin no, to I, I eliminate I that. The well, we, in the short time by, we have left. The wars are caused by these, then that's why you got the Houthis you can't get along with Al-Qaeda. You got these different religious ideologies that are controlling that region. That's why you got the ISIS's. That's why you got the Al-Qaeda's. No, Al -Qaeda. you got the ISIS because of Gidmo. The people who came out of Gitmo and the reason the way America treated the prisoners of no, war, man. they were tortured, that America, when you no, talk no, about no, 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 inequality, no, no. which is what we just spoke of, that is the main reason why these no. people are rebelling, sir. No, no, it's no, not no. religious they had, ideology. They had that, that, that institution of Gitmo beforehand, they had caused this vacuum when they eliminated Saddam Hussein. That's why... Bush Senior was like, you know what? We're not going to take out Saddam. We're going to say, you know, get out of, get out of, uh, uh, where, where, um, Iraq? No, not Iraq. Uh, well, we got about Kuwait. two minutes. Get Kuwait, out of Kuwait, Kuwait, Kuwait. Get yes. Out of Kuwait. Yes. And he knew if he took out Saddam and Ude and Use, it was going to create this vacuum. And so mm -hmm. when you take out those dictator leaders that are supposed to be evil, now you got these crazy radical. Theocratic groups running around. And they well, who's crazier? Around. The people who've dropped the atomic the, the bombs terrorists. on the planet or the people who the are Hebrew just fighting to eat? You know what I'm saying? You're that. talking about these global, powerful, militarized, the, the police notice, force, inequality. Notice, but then you talk about the religious people. Come on, man. Right, right, right. Notice how you left the country and you came back. Okay. <laughs> With that being said, you want to close this out, Kevin? Sure. I think, uh, you know... I, one thing that you said that I wanted to mention okay. was that uh, when you mentioned Guantanamo, mm -hmm. well, the, the people who have been released from Guantanamo, right. uh, President Obama, at the beginning of his term, remember in 2009, he right. wanted to get rid of Guantanamo, exactly. he wanted to close it. He yeah. says he's going to close it now, too. We'll right. see what happens. Right. But uh, he actually did make some moves to do that, and he transferred some prisoners to Yemen. Right. And Ali Abdullah Saleh, who's there this guy who was in charge of Yemen for so long, right. Right. 
he actually uh, released some of them, uh, mm-hmm. or they got out mm. because the prisons weren't very good, right. and uh, and they joined ACAP, I- Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Thank you. And so, Thank so you. you do have Guantanamo detainees, former Guantanamo de- detainees, in. Uh, Al Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, organizing, and, fighting against. In fact, one of the guys actually, his face was broadcast on when they declared a cap a thing. Yes, uh, it was a former detainee. Yes, and then Obama completely backed off closing Guantanamo, even oh, though yeah. he was going to do it. Uh, that was part of what played into that, and in, in two thousand nine. Absolutely. I guess I'd summarize us saying mm-hmm. that uh, you know we will have to watch what happens in the capital okay. in Sanaa and and in Yemen. To Man. see if we can achieve any stability. Okay. Thank you, young man. Thank you. <laughs> Next week, we're going to deal with uh, Baltimore. Yeah. The uprising. Yeah. So we're going to have, hopefully, King Noble come on. And, come on, uh, now. Maybe we'll have a thrashing come on. So next week, we out. Yanga, Vince, people, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Look we forward out. to seeing you. Yes, sir. Get record. All right. Oh, yeah. Black sun in the hizzle. Oh, for shizzle dizzle. We got an excellent show here today, but first I want to say the views and opinions and that of the arena does not reflect that of Comcast, its staff, affiliates, or associates. And the views of Black Sun does not reflect that of the arena. We are a council. With that being said, viewer discretion is advised. Today's topic, we're going to deal with Yemen, but 